Hello everyone, this is Jordan. Welcome back to the Daily Gold YouTube channel. This video is being recorded on the evening of Sunday, October 13th, 2024. And this is a video for Macro Mondays. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you all had a great weekend. And in this video, I'm going to talk about when the stock market might hit its secular peak. So let's get into it. So this is a gold channel and I focus on all things precious metals, but why do I constantly talk about the stock market and the secular bull, secular bear? Because precious metals absolutely perform the best after secular bull markets and stocks. And, and you can see it right here. Here's the stock market. Here's Barron's Gold Mining Index, silver and gold. And so these vertical lines, they mark the end of the secular bulls in the S&P 500. So historically, we're looking at 1929, the very end of 1968, and then also 2000. So we've yet to have that in this current secular bull. I'm going to show you another similar chart with more detail in it, but we're holding above the 40-month moving average. That's the key metric that I use. And so after these lines in the peaks and the secular bulls in the stock market, we can see how well precious metals performed. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see the great performance after these peaks. Now, the one outlier, and I'm writing about this in my book as I'm editing a chapter about the stock market and its impact on precious metals, this is the one outlier, is right here where you had the big breakout in gold stocks in 1964, which I think is very comparable to this breakout in gold that we had earlier this year. So, Perhaps that's one argument someone can make. They can say, well, we had the big breakout in the gold market at the end of 64. S&P continued on in the secular bull for another four years. So if you want to use that piece of information, does that mean that the stock market could peak in 2028? Possibly. I don't know, but it's something to think about. But I'm going to, I'm going to talk more about the stock market and uh, much less about precious metals uh, in these last couple charts, but uh, I just wanted to get this across for those of you, if you haven't been following my work, it's just such an important thing to understand. Precious metals will perform best when the stock market falls into a secular bear. Okay, so this is a great chart from Jurian Timmer from Fidelity, from his Twitter, and uh, he produces great charts like this. And, you know, Fidelity, they're a, ma a mainstream company, but I like Jurian's work because if you're someone who works for Fidelity and all those places, you have to be bullish all the time. You never entertain secular bears or you know, cyclical bears or anything like anything like that. But I, I think he's he's fair minded and not biased like you know 98% of the people working at those places. But my diatribe aside, this shows the secular bulls in real terms. So this is divided by. Uh, the CPI, and it includes dividends. We can see here what's the real cumulative return for the stock market. So we're looking at 1921 to 29, you know, this this one right here, 49 to 68, this light color here, 82 to 2000. And that is, uh, I believe, this one. And uh, here's where we are right now. So based on where we are right now, this chart tells you it could go a little bit more. Does it, I mean, will it peak here? Will it peak here? Will it peak here? I mean, nobody knows. But what this tells you is historically, this can probably run for a little bit longer. Now, getting into my last chart, there's so many things to talk about here. I, I squeezed in all these data points onto one chart. So I'll probably, uh, or what I should say, I'm going to try and go through every one, one by one without going off on tangents as I like to do. So we'll start with the stock market here. So this is the S&P 500. This moving average is the 170 week moving average, which is close enough to the 40 month moving average. I, I like using weekly because you get more data points in there. You can see a few more turns and wiggles, but this moving average it's a great indicator of the secular trend. We can see when it lost the moving average, then the market really cratered at the beginning of the Great Depression. Then, after the bottom in 1942, the majority of the time, the S&P held above the moving average. Well, it did kind of 
fall below it here in 62, a little bit here after the 66 peak, but it, it, it quickly recovered, so it didn't last. Then we can see here is when it really lost it for good. So it lost it here. I think in 1970, it looks to me like maybe early 1970. So the peak was in late 68. And then 82 to 2000. Look at this. It held above this moving average. I mean, all basically, it, really, it held above it almost the entire time. It looks like the entire time since 82. I mean, other than during the 87 crash for a bit. Then, of course, lost it in 2001. So let's fast forward to where we are here and now. So it's been holding above, other than the COVID crash. If you look at the monthly chart, I think we were we had one, maybe two closes below it, below the 40-month. But other than that, the market has held above it very nicely and consistently. And so you go back to, to 2022 and 2023, there were multiple tests of the moving average. So there were points where the market could have failed. Now we're seeing the market has broken out again and you know maybe it's accelerating. So maybe this is accelerating. You know, some people say it could be 1995. I, I don't agree with that because in 95 commodities were in the dumps. You didn't have gold at a new all-time high. So you have to think about intermarket analysis. So this is where we are. The market's gaining momentum. It's a little bit different from here when we can see the markets, it, it didn't really get that far above the moving averages. You know, maybe here in the mid 60s, that was by a decent amount, but this looks like it's by an even bigger amount. But anyway, so that's the key 40 month moving average. If you're looking at the weekly, 170 week. So you, you, we can use that as a great indicator. It, it will basically, when the market falls and loses the moving average, that will give us confirmation of being in a new secular bear. Because, of course, this won't tell us when the market will peak. Okay, so moving on, moving on let's talk about the CAPE ratio, the 10-year PE. Now, one thing about valuations I do want to say is the market now, the stock market, is... Now it's comprised of a lot more tech and faster growing companies, which tend to trade at a higher valuation. So that, I mean, it's, it's great. And I, I've done this before where you compare current valuations in the market, you know, with 50 or 60 or 30 or 40 years ago. I, it, it, it is important, but it's something we have to remember that you can make a case today because there are more tech companies, more faster growing companies, that the valuation could be higher. So there's that. But with that being said, look at where the CAPE is right now. It's at 36. And it's not that far off from the, this peak here at the end of 21. This peak here of the market, I believe it came down 25, 27% in 22. And, you know, the, the I think the closer the market gets to the 2000 peak and the 29 peak, that's a little scary. Like this peak here at the end of 21, that was the third highest basically in history. So this is at 36 right now. If we get some kind of a blow off move and this thing moves like this and goes above 40, I mean, this is going to be a little similar to 2000. So it is possible that you could get a blow off top similar to this. Doesn't have to be perfectly similar. But that's something to keep in mind. So the the more of a blow off you get here, and the higher the valuation goes, that's that's dangerous. Like that's getting closer, I think, to a secular peak. Okay, now moving on from that, this is my expected returns indicator of a sixty forty portfolio. I mean, it's not a perfect indicator, but I'm using Robert Schiller's Cape data, and he has something he calls excess Cape yield to project stock returns. And he's even adjust, he even adjusted it, you know, to account for how expensive the market has been since the 1990s. So it's it's projecting even higher returns than it would have if he was using the old methodology. So I use the 10-year yield for 40%, and then the, the excess Cape yield for 60%. So that's how I got this indicator here. You know, it's not perfect, but what it does show you is you know, we are similar to 
again, the early to mid late 1960s. So that to me is interesting. You know, we're, we're definitely at levels, you know, where you're, you're closer in the, in the realm of a secular peak. Last thing here, and this is important because I think most people don't think about this as far as the end of a secular bull market. So this is the 10 year yield. And I got the line here, this horizontal line at 5%. And this is what helped end the sec this secular bull was obviously, you know, we had inflation start to creep higher in the mid sixties. It got higher in the late sixties. And because of that, you know, the 10 year yield, it started moving up here, 65, 66. You had the Dow peak here, but once it was above 5%, you can see it broke above 5% and then kept moving higher. That really ended or we can say it coincided with the end of that secular bull, started the secular bear. So this is something to keep in mind. And here we are now, you know, you go back to, I think late last year, whenever the peak was in the 10 year yield, the peak was, it was about 5%. So, you know, it remains to be seen. Are we going to have a recession? Are we going to have a soft landing? If we are going to have a soft landing, then the inflation, reflation, stagflation risk could rise. And, you know, if you see the 10 year yield start to move back up, it, it goes to 5%, it goes above 5%. 5 th this is a level that should be negative for the stock market. And if you think about how indebted we are, you know, the government debt, corporate debt, all, you know, all the debt. We didn't have debt problems here in the late 60s. But again, this is the 10-year yield, long-term rates going up past a certain threshold. That's what killed this secular bull. So if we get into a situation where we have a soft landing, but stagflation becomes an issue, you know, gold's still going up, commodity prices, oil's rebounding, the Fed has to stop cutting rates, the 10-year yield goes to 5%, you know, it goes above 5%, growth is really petering out again. That that's something that can be a catalyst for the end of this secular bull. So that's another thing to keep an eye on. I know it's a long video. I am going to be following all of these things. I will be talking about them in my book, which I'm editing right now. And thank you so much for staying all the way to the end of this video. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Would love to hear your thoughts. And I'll talk to you guys again in the next video.